Whether it's those funny eyelashes or whether it's uneven stitches or tension troubles or puckering and wrinkles, there's some there I promise, free motion quilting is not without its trials and tribulations and they can be really frustrating when you're starting out. So I've got you covered in this video and we're going to troubleshoot some of those and a couple more besides to help you become a really confident free motion quilter. Who am I? I am Kim. This is Quilt with Kim. You're very welcome. Let's go check out what the first problem is. First up we have a really common problem and that is eyelashes or loops just like this one here uh, now this one I borrowed from a lady on the internet on a Facebook group she has given me permission to use that but as you can see here we've got these eyelashes or these loops that are appearing on the reverse of the quilt sandwich now that happens when you are going too speedily around the corners and your machine can't quite keep up and it's puts all the tension out and it makes those loops. So to counteract that and to stop that happening, you need to go steady around those corners. So slow the pace down a little bit and go steady around the corners. So think that you're out driving in a country lane and you're going around the corners slowly and steadily. You're not being an F1 driver in the Monaco Grand Prix. So <laughs> you're going for the country lane vibe, not the Grand Prix vibe, but that should help. It is always practice with free motion quilting. That'll help is getting that pace steady, but slow your pace down and that should help eliminate those. Okay, let's get on to the next one. What about tension then, like this image up here? Not all machines need their tension adjusting. So if you're sure that you've got that coordination right between the speed of your foot on the foot pedal and the speed of your hands, if you know that bit's right and your tension is still out, then normally you need to adjust the tension by loosening. So what I don't want you to do is go wild and lower the tension right down. What you need to do is start at wherever your manufacturer's standard setting is for the tension on your machine and they do vary just slightly machine to machine so find out what that is and if you need to brush up on tension and what that is on a machine check out this video here that's not a clickable link by the way I'll put the link in the description below but that's so you know what you're looking for and then what you're going to do is adjust that tension dial very slowly or push push the buttons really slowly to come down just one half a number at a time so if you're at four is your standard setting come down to three and a half if you've got a dial on your machine because some machines do then just come down to maybe like a three and three quarters and try that and to see what difference that makes sometimes you don't need much adjustment at all so don't go wild as i said just come down really slowly what I will say as a little caveat though, is that I have free motioned on two really good upper mid range machines. They were both exactly the same model machine and one of them needed the tension just lowering slightly and the other one didn't. So don't assume your tension does need adjusting, but if it does come down really, really slowly. And in fact, on the one that did need adjusting, it was only by half, a, half an amount um, it just came down very slightly. If you think that the tension is going up, the same thing applies, just go up really, really slowly and just keep checking it and seeing what it looks like. But don't go wild, that's my advice. Whichever way it goes, don't go wild. Right, let's get on to the next trouble that we get with free motion. What about puckering on your quilts when you get all those annoying wrinkles and creases and folds that get caught up on the back underneath your free motion? Will any quilting come to that? The answer is to make sure that you are very well basted, not that basting. <laughs> you need to baste your quilt sandwich and make sure you've got rid of all of those creases to start with. So whether you're using a spray base or whether you're using needle and thread, and by the way, this thread I've had for centuries, but it works beautifully for basting. Um, whether you use either of those, you want to make sure that you have got the, your quilt sandwich basted really well, get all the creases out to start with, smooth and smooth and smooth. And then when you are quilting, 
having stuck it all together, when you are quilting, stop every couple of minutes or so and make sure that the underneath of your quilt is all smoothed out. So use your fingers to smooth it out and constantly smooth on the top as well. That's why we need quilting gloves that'll help in that process too. So get your quilt very well basted. If you're new to quilting, do not get started on a large quilt. They are far too large to learn on. It is gonna fight you, it is gonna pull, it is gonna get in your way, it is just gonna cause a big problem, however beautiful it might be. What you need to do is <laughs> start with a smaller block, one that is easy to handle, the one that you can get under your machine that isn't gonna pull against your needle, that you're not gonna fight, you're not gonna struggle with. Learning on a small block will make your life so much easier. So do a quilt as you go quilt. So you've got the blocks that are this size and learn your free motion on the sections. Then you learn the techniques and then in time you'll get the practice and you can get onto the large quilts. What about uneven stitches like this one? It happens and it happens mostly when you are starting out and you haven't got that even pace between your foot and your hands. So we need our hands going at a probably slower pace than you would imagine and you need your feet or your foot pedal going at a faster pace than you would imagine. So it's a bit like patting your head and rubbing your tummy. It's that combination that you need and it's going to take practice to get that right. So that is your answer to the uneven stitches. It's is the balance between those two and practicing until you get that perfect. And I know that you will get all those quilt sandwiches, all the practice ones and practice and you will find your even stitch perfection. Next up, how do we avoid those skip stitches? Oh, they're really difficult to remedy as well, but how to stop them happening in the first place? It could be down to your needle. So you could have a, a needle that needs replacing, so it's a bit blunt. It could be damaged and you don't know about that. So swap your needle out. It can also mean that you're going too fast for your machine. So slow your pace down and allow your needle to catch the bobbin thread. And hopefully one of those will stop you getting your skip stitches. What if you're scared of free motion quilting and you just don't want to start because it's too scary? Don't worry, I hear you. You're not alone, everybody goes through that. The easiest way to get over that is just to start really, but don't start on your quilt. Just don't. <laughs> start on practice quilt sandwiches, little mini practice pieces that you put together from scraps. We all have scraps of wadding kicking around or batting kicking around. Use those make up quilt sandwiches. All the off cuts from when you're squaring up your quilt, use those and use them to practice. That is the only way that you get over your fear is to get started and to practice and then practice and then practice some more. And before you know it, you will be quilting with complete confidence. I really hope that has helped you to overcome some of the most common trials that you get with a free motion quilting and to help you towards becoming a more confident free motion quilter. If it has, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell because it really helps to support free tuition here out in YouTube land. In the meantime, I will look forward to seeing you in the next video and I shall say bye for now.